Section 10.4 is about geometric sequences. Now, we talked about geometric sequences in algebra. Um, in algebra, we would have had a geometric sequence formula that looks something like this. Um, any term is the same as the first term times r to the n minus 1 power. Um, when we were dealing with that, we're going to edit this just a little bit. Um, the geometric sequence that we're going to use in our chapter is going to start with our initial term, which is our principal, our starting amount. And in general, we'd like to avoid this n minus 1, if at all possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to shift this thing and say, instead of starting with a sub 1, I'm going to start with um, a sub 0 instead. Okay? Um, so my any given term, instead of an a sub n, I'm going to be more specific and call it a g sub n. My starting term is going to be g sub 0. And since I've got this g sub 0, I'm actually able to turn this n minus 1. Um, if I put in a 1 here, 1 minus 1 is 0. If I put in a 0, 0 minus 1. Um, I can end up with just basically an r. Um, I'm not going to call it r though because that would be um, too easy, I think. Um, what we're going to call it instead is a c for the common ratio between this. So in algebra we use an r for that. Um, in this section we're going to be using a c. And it's going to be raised to the nth power. So g sub 0 is considered to be the initial term. It's not considered to be the first term in the sequence. Okay. So that can be a little bit confusing. So geometric sequence, g sub 0 is p, the initial starting amount. c is the common ratio. It's what it gets multiplied by. And you can create this by just continually multiplying, or you can use the explicit formula, which we have written right here. So a geometric sequence starts with some initial term p and then multiplies every term um, by a common ratio c. So for example, in this case, um, p or g sub 0, however you want to think about that, is 5. And if we look at this, what is it multiplying by? Each time it's multiplying times 2. So c equals 2 here. Um, 5 times 2 is 10, times 2 is 20, times 2 is 40, times 2 is 80. Generically, that means you've got terms that look like p, p times c, times another c, times another c, times another c, or p times c to the n. The tricky part is that this one is considered to be g sub 0, this one is g sub 1, this one is g sub 2, etc. That allows this to be g sub n here, okay? So that initial term has no um, times c. So for example, if I start off with 500, my initial g sub 0 is 500. If c is 1.08, man, doesn't that look like an interest rate or an increasing amount? Um, I know times 1.08, times 1.08, times 1.08, I could do that. I could also multiply um, the 10th power. That would mean n equals 10. So I would say um, g sub 10 equals the principal times c to the n. In our case, g sub 10 would be our initial value, 500, times 1.08 to the 10th power. And if I type this in, 500 times parentheses 1.08 raised to the 10th power, I end up with 1,079 46. And notice I put that dollar on there. This is the same problem we did yesterday with the compound interest or in the previous section with the compound interest. Geometric sequences are basically just a compound interest problem. Um, it's just another way to think about that. Or I guess you could say that the compound interest problem is really just a geometric sequence. Okay, your rent is currently $700 per month. You read in a local newspaper that due to changes in the housing market, the rents in the area are expected to increase by 5% per year. If you stay in your apartment for five years, what should you expect to pay for rent? All right, so there's two ways to think about this. It's currently $700. It's increasing by 5%. Now, we talked about this yesterday. If you are increasing by 
5%. The quickest way to do that would be to use a common ratio of 1 plus 5% or 1.05. Now, if I want to know um, what's happening here, I can use my geometric sequence. I want to know what it is going to be worth, or sorry, what is this going to be at the end of five years? So if n equals 5, my starting value is 700. I know I'm increasing by 5%, and I will increase that five times. So 700 times 1.05 raised to the fifth power. And I would get that my rent would actually go up to $893. Um, I've got 0 .397. I'm going to round that to 0 .40. Now this is called the explicit formula. You can just directly plug that in. You can also use a recursive formula. You could start off with your $700. That's now. And you know that in one year, so I have to multiply by 1.05, in one year, 700 times 1.05, it's going to be um, 735, that's in one year. And then if I take 735 times 1.05 times 1.05, I end up with $771.75 at the end of two years. And you could continue this pattern out until you got to the fifth year, which would give you that 893.40. I would not recommend the recursive formula unless you really just don't have an idea of how to do it otherwise. You buy a new car for $21,000. On the way home, you hear Dave Ramsey on the radio saying that new cars are a bad purchase because they depreciate or go down in value on average by 18 cents per year, or sorry, 18% per year. If this is true, what will your car be worth in six years? So if you are going down by 18%, that means your multiplier is a decrease. So we would go 1 minus 18%. Or in other words, your, <coughs> excuse me, your multiplier is 0.82. Okay. So we could take our G sub n is P times C to the n. Um, G sub n, I'm looking for six years. The car starts at 21,000. And my multiplier is 82.82% per year. Okay. So 21,000 times 0.82 raised to the sixth power. And we get that at the end of six years, our $21,000 car is worth $6,384.14. All right. A new infectious disease, by the way, I totally made this problem up, so don't feel concerned. A new infectious disease, X26, has been discovered and there is no current vaccine or treatment. The Center for Disease Control estimates that until a vaccine becomes available, that the virus will spread at a 25% annual rate of growth. The CDC is currently tracking 1,000 known cases of X26. How many new cases will occur each year over the next three years? What if it takes... 10 years to develop a vaccine. Okay, so if we're dealing with this, we have a 25% growth rate. So if we're going up by 25%, we would use a C value of 1 plus 0.25. Okay, and that would give me 1.25. Now, I, I kind of doubt the logic a little bit of this here. So, um, we would start off and we have a thousand known cases. So at the end in one year, we would multiply by 125. 1,000 times 1.25. That would give me 1250. Okay. Um, so that would be the first year because it says over the next three years. And then I could take that times 1.25. And I end up with 1562.5. That would be the second year. And I could take that times 1.25. 
and I end up with 1953 and some change for the third year. Okay, so we could use this recursive formula to figure these out. What if it takes 10 years? What are we talking about? So our 1,000 cases, we would multiply by 1.25 10 times. So 1,000 times 1.25 raised to the 10th power. So 9, uh, sorry, 9313.22. So approximately 9,313 cases are occurring here, okay? Now you might say, well, what happens if I want to um, add up all of those? What would the sum be? If you ever want to add up all the numbers, you have something called a, a series instead of a sequence. To find the sum of a series, we have this formula P times C to the N minus 1 over C minus 1 where P is your initial term and C is the common ratio, and N is the number of terms. Okay. Also, remember that that number of terms does not include your initial term. So I could actually add these up. If this was representing a new case every year, um, we could um, put these numbers in. Some, we started with 1,000 cases. We have 1.25 as our C to the 10th power, minus 1 over 1.25 minus 1. Now hopefully you have a really good calculator. What you're going to need to do is be a friend of the parentheses. So I would recommend that you um, use parentheses around the top. Parentheses 1.25 raised to the tenth minus 1 close parentheses divided by parentheses 1.25 minus 1 close parentheses, and then multiply by that 1,000 that's out in front. And this would give me a really big sum. All of these numbers in this sequence would add up to 33,252.90, and et cetera, um, would be the sum of all of those numbers put together. So I can use this sum formula um, for my geometric sequence. You remember your sum formula from Algebra 2 um, was the sum of n terms was a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1. So it's very, very similar here. Okay. Okay. So find the sum of the following geometric sequences. Okay. Find the sum of the following geometric sequences. So one thing I notice is that this last term here is to the 36th power. That's going to give me my n. n equals 36. That means that this first term is g sub 1. The second term is g sub 2. This term is g sub 3. This is g sub n, where it is n equals 36. So the exponent on that c value there um, gives me my term. So c is 1.042. That's definitely the multiplier. The other number that I really need is my starting amount. Now the starting amount is g sub 0. So if you think backwards, what term would have been right here? What did we start with before we multiplied by 1.042? Well that would have been just plain old 400. That's my g sub 0. See 400 times the rate, 400 times the rate times the rate, etc. So the p-value here would be that 400. Okay, so find the sum, it says. The sum is the starting value, 400, times c to the n minus 1, 1 1.042 to the 36th minus 1 over c minus 1, 1 1.042 minus 1. All right, here we go. I'm going to use parentheses. I'm going to say uh, parentheses 1.042 raised to the 36th minus 1. Close the parentheses. Divided by parentheses 1.042 minus 1. Close the parentheses. Times 400. And I end up with 32360.23 as my sum. Okay. 
Next one, I see that I have 250 times 0.85 to the first, so that's my g sub 1. That's g sub 2, that's g sub 3. This would be g sub 24, so I can use n equals 24. The c value here is 1, sorry, is 0 0.85. And we would need to figure out what that g sub 0 is going to be. Okay, so that g sub 0, um, I would think, what is that going to be? That is that 250 that we would start off with. Okay, all right, so my sum is 250 times 1, sorry, 0 0.85, that's c to the n, 24 minus 1 over 0 0.85 minus 1. And I would be a friend of the parenthesis, parenthesis 0.85 raised to the 24th minus 1 divided by parenthesis 0 0.85 minus 1 times 250. I end up with a sum of 1632.95. That's rounded. Okay. okay. Now, next time we're going to be talking about section 10.6, which is installment loans. Okay. But for right now, okay, the things that you need to remember in this section are primarily just working with these two formulas and understanding what they mean. So I know that any term is equal to the principal sorry, the, the um, initial starting term, times c to the n, where p equals g sub 0. Okay, we also have that sum at the top of the page, so if you're looking for a sum, okay, the sum is the principal, g sub 0, times c to the n minus 1 over c minus 1. That would give you the sum of the terms in that sequence.